It's the beginning of August in Iceland, and the shores of Lake Thingvatlevat are full of life. This subarctic lake lay in the rift valley of the Mid-Atlantic Ridge, Primarily fed by groundwater springs, the water in the lake retains remarkable clarity. The porous lava rock in its bottom acting like a natural filter. The lake and its surroundings have great significance in Icelandic history. The lake itself, however, could be considered a location for evolutionary play. From above, this part of the rocky bottom looks similar to a reef in the tropics, rather than a shore of a cold water lake. Dark spots contrast against the vivid background of the shallows. They are called reds and are made by the arctic char as part of their spawning rituals. In the end of the last glaciation, Arctic char became landlocked in Thingvatlevat and since then has evolved into four distinct morphs that differ in morphology, life history characteristics and behavior. However, being a member of Salmonid family, Arctic char retains its instinct to migrate for spawning. Every summer, from the end of July until mid-August, the large bentivorous morph of Thingvatlevat char arrives from other parts of the lake to this particular area to spawn. The cold upwelling groundwater keeps the area at a constant toasty 3 degrees Celsius all year round. Ideal for keeping the eggs viable and healthy. With other morphs spawning in this area, Later in the season, it is fairly safe to say that the large bentivorous morph is the most abundant now. Subterminal mouth, rounded head and large brightly colored bodies are the distinguishing traits of this morph. This bright coloration is especially characteristic to the males, which are first to arrive to the spawning grounds. In average, the males also stay in the spawning grounds for a longer time than the large benthic females. The mixing of cold and warm water on the spawning area makes the water shimmer. While waiting for the opportunity to spawn, these two males engage in circle displays, nipping and biting the opponent to establish who is stronger or more persistent. Erect fins and arched back signify somewhat reluctant aggression. Large bentivorous char continue growing throughout their lives and most males at the breeding grounds are mature and ready to spawn despite their size difference. However, based on their size and the size of their competitors, they may favor a different breeding strategy. As far as breeding goes, the size usually is the key point. The larger the male, the more likely it is to guard the female. The smaller the male, the more likely it is to sneak. These circle displays can last for extended periods of time, but they are not considered displays of territorial behavior. It is mid-August now. And now there is more animation in the shallows, because females arrive to the spawning ground. The dark spots seen so well from above are created by female char. The female removes small rocks and algae from the substrate to prepare the red. 
Females are usually darker than males and tend to lay closer to the bottom. They can also be distinguished by distended bellies and all over around their appearance. In absence of competition from larger males, this male assumes a guarding position. The lighter male courts the female by gliding along her side and trembling. The female circles the area and lays close again. However, in a setting with more fish, things become less clear. Which one is the female? How about now? There are about four males per female in the spawning ground. With so much room for error, the usefulness of different breeding tactics becomes more evident. The guarding males tend to be larger, older individuals, whilst the sneaking males will predominantly be smaller, but also darker, almost female-like, making the guarding male's job a bit more difficult. Regardless of the breeding strategy, any males will attempt courting the female. Spawning is not the only objective of some males. Eggs are also a valuable source of protein, and there are plenty of opportunistic males that will not pass up on an opportunity for an easy meal. The guarding male may try to keep the potential opponents and egg thieves at bay, but sometimes it proves to be too much. As the spawning season progresses, things heat up. Because of the high competition, aggression is displayed both by the guarding male and by the female in attempt to keep the eggs safe. Whilst the sneaking males are not yet large or strong enough to take up or keep the position of a guarding male, they usually remain in the area, waiting for the opportunity to sneak fertilization. And while the guarding male is busy, several other males eagerly attempt to contribute to the gene pool. This male is not as diligent as seems. Despite the vigilant guard, it seems that this opportunity was snatched away by a far smaller sneaking male. The female does not release all eggs at once though, hence there are still some opportunities left for this guarding male. Busy with their reproductive activities, they do not seem to notice audience. However, one must not outstay their welcome. Otherwise, we'd be reminded in a not-so-subtle way about invading privacy. <laughs>